Hello, it's Howard Rheingold. One of the great benefits of all the various signals I send out to the world is that they find their way to people who have interesting things to say. Uh, often when they pass through town I invite them to go walking on the mountain with me. In, in this case Patrick Meyer who is involved in applying Web 2.0 technologies to the very serious problems of human rights abuses reporting and prevention stopped by for a walk and a talk and I took a little short video of him describing his project Ushahidi. Yes, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell us about Ushahidi. Sounds great. My name is Patrick Meyer. I'm a fellow at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative. And I'm also involved with a project called Ushahidi, which is Swahili for witness. And Ushahidi is an all-African initiative that came to light uh, shortly after the election-related violence in Kenya in December 2007. A number of prominent Kenyan bloggers um, felt they needed to do something about the violence that was taking place and that was largely being undocumented by the mainstream media for various different reasons. And one suggestion was to put together a simple Google Map web-based interface uh, of Kenya and allow individuals to report on the human rights violations that they themselves witnessed or had heard of, to have the ability to report on it either directly online or by SMS. And so what this group of uh, African tech bloggers were able to put together was a platform that in effect allowed for the crowdsourcing of crisis information, which is a radically different approach to humanitarian information management systems and the documentation of human rights is really allowing individuals themselves to report information. And since then, this platform has been deployed in Zimbabwe and in Gaza, as well as in the DRC. And what we've done at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative and HHI, as part of our two-year program on crisis mapping and early warning, is identify new and innovative creative projects like Ushahidi to basically uh, help incubate those projects and, and scale up. And as part of the Ushahidi team, working very closely with them, one of the projects that we uh, launched at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative was to start looking at the role of crowdsourcing human rights as another way to document human rights information, but relative to other traditional ways, for example, the mainstream media documenting human rights violations and conflict, uh, as well as citizen journalism, which we've seen as uh, on the rise. So one of the projects that I took the lead on at HHI was to compare these different sources of information and the way we did this is we used Google Earth as a platform and we took the Ushahidi data and took the first month of the violence in Kenya and the reported human rights violations that came through based on this crowdsourcing platform and basically mapped that information. It was time stamped and it was geo-referenced already so it was fairly easy to just put that in Google Earth and then to animate it over time to start identifying communication flows, information flows during crises. And we did the same thing with the mainstream media, both uh, print and broadcast journalism, so Kenyan national newspapers, radio broadcasts, television broadcasts. And for each report, we did the same thing. We documented the event that took place, uh, where it took place, and when it took place. And we also mapped that over space and time using Google Earth as a platform. And Kenya, which is unbeknownst to many, has uh, probably Africa's most thriving blogosphere. Very active bloggers that were particularly active during the elections. That they went out in the streets, they got their digital cameras, they would be micro-blogging, updating their blogs on a regular basis, and also taking a lot of pictures. In fact, one of the Shahidi team members was in Eldoret in Kenya, and she was using Twitter to report on the violence that was taking place. So what we did is we documented the reports that citizen journalists were themselves documenting on an ongoing basis and time-stamped those reports and, and geo-referenced those reports as well in terms of where the violence was happening. And so we took these different three sources of information and visualized them over 
time and space on Google Earth. And what that allows us to do is start to get an at-a-glance understanding as to what the dynamics were, where the mainstream media was reporting, when it was reporting, and what it was reporting on compared to citizen journalism, citizen journalists, as well as crowdsourcing, everyday average Kenyans around Africa, around Kenya, pardon me, who were reporting on human rights abuses. And a number of sort of preliminary conclusions that we were able to draw based on this visualization technique was that citizen journalists tended to be more uh, quick in reporting escalating signs of social tensions. They'd be the first on site to report that information and the mainstream media would come at a later time when there were unfortunately body counts already to report and then they would provide that kind of reporting. From a human rights and crowdsourcing perspective, it was clear that Ushahidi reports were coming from a wider geographical range than either citizen journalists or uh, the mainstream media was coming in. And